All right, what's up guys? I wanted to kind of go over my self-filming setup with you. Got my little puppy here with me. This is Willow. She's our newest addition to the family. Little Australian Shepherd. Yeah. <laughs> She's a handful right now. So the main premise of self-filming is that you really want to be able to operate everything with one hand. So that kind of rules out DSLRs in my opinion. I've shot with DSLRs for a long time. Um, when, we're, when we have a camera guy, we usually resort to shooting with DSLRs, but when you're self-filming, you got to shoot the deer and film the deer. So it's a totally different strategy. The most important part about the camcorder, in my opinion, is that one, it can shoot in 4K. 4K is not a make or break it thing, but you can zoom in on the deer and everything when they're off in the distance. But then as soon as it comes down to having to take that shot, you really need to be able to, to back out to where you don't have to keep reaching down and moving your camera. And if you shoot in 4K, that's it's double the resolution of HD. Essentially, if you think about it, you have a 4K video and then an HD would be inside of that. So you have all this room that you can crop your video in, you can zoom it in, you can reframe stuff. So it gives you a lot more flexibility. And then the link remote essentially is just, it's got a record start stop button and it's got zoom. Yeah, that's pretty much all I need. I can flip my screen open and it, my camcorder will turn on and everything's set to auto. And then from there, I can hit my record button on my handle and I can zoom with one hand. The GoPro is pretty self-explanatory. It's got a one click record, start, stop on the top. As I'm going, I'll have this clipped on my bow or I'll just hold it out in front of me while I'm doing an interview. You know, you hit the, the record button one time, it records, you hit it again, it stops recording and it turns off. It's just such an easy way to grab all that B-roll when you're walking in. You do have to understand though that these things are absolutely horrible, it's like pitiful. The audio is absolutely unusable. This is the Rode Video Micro. And the cool thing about this one is that you don't need batteries for it. It actually just plugs in and it's powered off of the cord, <laughs> I guess. It doesn't have any batteries whatsoever. But, and then I have the, the audio adapter, which you have to have the audio adapter if you wanna plug any kind of mic into a GoPro. There's a whole bunch of these um, mounts that you can find for your GoPro that have the space for the audio adapter. But you wanna make sure that if you're gonna get a GoPro, you get the, the mount and the audio adapter and a mic. When I'm in my tree, usually what I'll do is I've got my Versa strap up here and I'll just clip it in upside down. And I do this in my car a lot too, is I'll clip it to my mirror and I'll just have it hang upside down pointing at me. And I can just flip the video and post. It doesn't have to be upright all the time. But what I'll do usually, this is a lot higher, so I'll be, you know, down here. But I just flip it upside down and I get the angle how I want it and then I'm good to go. If you have a GoPro and you wanna run one of these Rode video micros, you can. Another option that I found is just this lapel mic right here. And it's just a, a basic lapel mic, but you can take this lapel, but I can plug it right into this audio, trans, um, this audio adapter on the GoPro. All right, guys, this is the audio coming straight off the GoPro. It's absolutely hugely horrible if there's any kind of wind or anything blowing across it. All right, this is the audio coming from the Rode Video Micro, and this is usually my go-to mic just for point and shoot stuff. I run this thing all the time. All right, now this is the audio coming straight off of my lapel, and as you can see, I have it tethered right into the GoPro, and my whole lapel mic is just kind of hanging here. And a lot of times you can't even see the mic, it's hanging, you know, low enough where it's not really that noticeable. For the price of what you can pay to get one of these and have some really good audio for your interviews, I use this thing all the time. I'll just plug it into my GoPro, do my interview, unplug it, and then just assume I don't need the audio for the rest of the stuff. But that is an excellent way to get killer interview audio, and you can get a mic cord for like 20 bucks. So honestly, to be able to grab that and have stellar audio on your GoPro, and you could plug it into your camcorder if you really wanted to, and you could do interviews on your camcorder um, and cut your whole your GoPro out if you if you're like I just I don't want to mess with that. You could do that too. You could buy a little lavalier mic, plug it right into your camcorder, and then do your interviews, unplug it, and then you know continue your hunt or whatever. Just to show you, this is the audio coming directly from this lavalier mic. Nothing more, nothing less. It's just a cord plugged right into the camcorder. This is a Sony AX100. Test, 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 test. 
get a pretty good idea of the quality of audio that you're able to get from this compared to if I unplug it. Now this is the audio coming straight off the camcorder and it's not bad and I use this a lot of times just to get general noise uh, when I'm recording animals in the woods and whatnot but it's usually not the best for interviews if it's real windy out. If you really do want to get a mic for your camcorder, which you can, it's just more of a pain packing in because it's one more thing that you got to put and set up and all that. I've got a Rode VideoMic Pro and these things have been amazing for me. They're not crazy expensive and the audio coming out of them is fantastic. Now, if you really feel like you need a wireless mic, like a true wireless mic, if you're filming somebody else and you're like, I just, I want that super awesome, crisp vocal audio when they're, you know, way off in the distance, maybe you're doing stalk, spot and stalks or whatever, obviously this wouldn't be self-filming, but I would seriously look into the Rode wireless go microphones and you can plug a, a microphone cable like the one i've got on into it or it comes with just a little windscreen and you can just use this alone clip it right here to your shirt and you can use that as your mic but it's got like a seven hour uh, battery life on it which is incredible but normally these receivers are like you know beefy like this this is the size of my sign my my sennheiser receiver and like I could never fit this on my GoPro. This wireless Go receiver, I could literally put this right onto my GoPro and plug it in, like, <laughs> you know, and then just run a little bitty K the cable that comes with it and put it, plug it in, and you've got a wireless mic on your GoPro. Like that's crazy to me. The technology's just gotten so good. That's pretty unbelievable. You could have never done that 10 years ago. The only other thing I have to talk about would be my camera arm setup. So this is a fourth arrow stiff arm and I'm running the 3.0 shoulder with the Talon base. That base is by far the best base they've ever came out with. It packs down so small. As far as the camera arm goes, I haven't done anything to it except spray paint it. And then I wrapped some of it in camo hockey tape just to cut down on the, the, the noise in case I bump it with something. And I've got a special Manfrotto fluid head on here. I've used a lot of different fluid heads, very expensive fluid heads, but I've always ran into the same issue when I'm self-filming with these fluid heads. I'll point my camera arm down on a deer or something like that and I'll take my hand off and then all of a sudden I see my camera arm floating like this and no matter how much I adjust the tension on it it always will float on me but this one in particular I'll put a link down below but it locks on like if you if you tip it somewhere it locks I think I could put a camera twice as heavy on here and it would still it wouldn't float at all it's just a fantastic fluid head it's also has a really cool little quick, quick release plate system on it. I love it. I would never use a different fluid head for self filming. So we'll talk about the base for a minute. You don't want to use the strap that they give you. In my opinion, any kind of a ratchet strap system is horrible. So what I did was I bought a belt buckle system or boat buckle, not belt buckle, boat buckle. The first thing that I did, you'll probably notice is I put stealth strips along the whole thing. It's just a bunch of metal, so I wanted to make sure I silenced it up right away. The next thing I did was I took the very end of the strap, I looped it, and I did a quick little stitch on it, and I put this little bungee on the end. One, my buckle won't slip out now. It's not gonna ever fall off. And then two, I use this bungee to kind of secure the whole strap around the base when I go to pack it up. I also stitched a little loop on here and that's just so that this strap won't ever come sliding off. It's gonna have a stopping point no matter which direction that it goes. The boat buckle system, honestly, I got this one from Double Steps, but it's just, it's so good. It's just as tight as a ratchet strap and it's so fast. It's quiet. So once you get it around the tree, you just pull the strap tight and then you just push the bolt buckle over onto itself and you're done. Put your camera arm on there, just level it out. The new 3.0 base, you don't even have to have a tool to, to do any leveling. And it doesn't matter what level of filming that you're at. When you're self-filming, you realize it's best to go minimal and easy. And it's gotta be efficient, it's gotta be easy. It can't be a pain in the butt, otherwise you won't do it. And that's there's a ton of guys that are getting into self-filming because they wanna make videos. And then they're before you know it, they're, they're listing all their stuff and selling it and getting rid of it because it's just hard. Like it is just hard. Thanks guys for watching. Subscribe, comment, let me know if you like this, if this helped you at all. And yeah, let me know if you want any more info about any particular part of my setup that I did. Come here, Willow. Come here. You say bye.
Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. You good girl.